Welcome to Insight, a concise comment on current issues from the Jubilee Center. We're now talking to Nick Spencer, co-author of Christianity, Climate Change and Sustainable Living, uh, which he wrote on behalf of the Jubilee Center, uh, and now Director of Studies at Theos. Nick, we hear all this talk that we need to do something about global warming. But can't we rely on technology to deliver a solution so that we can carry on as we always have? We can rely on technology to, de to deliver solutions, but we can't rely on a technological fix. I think one of the key Christian insights into this whole issue is that issues of sustainability are at heart a moral problem. They relate to how we relate to one another and how we relate to God's creation. So simply to say there's a technical fix dodges the issue. There are certainly technical responses, and not least the development of the renewable energy sector, that would make a big difference. But without tackling the key issue, which is, is a moral issue, how we relate to one another, how we relate to our neighbour on the other side of the world, technological solutions won't actually be the solution. So Nick, you're telling us that we need to do something. A technological fix isn't out there. But what at a personal and community level are you saying we ought to do? Yes, I mean there are lots of responses really and they're the kind of responses that people will be familiar with. They range from changing your light bulb to energy efficient light bulbs through to lagging your pipes, insulating your loft or getting double glazing. There are a whole range of individual things that you can do. Tear Fund publishes a very good little booklet called For Tomorrow Too which has lots of, sort of handy hints in it. There's also the communal response for Christians so that they can respond as a community as well as just individuals and that will involve having the same kind of energy efficient measures present in their church but also operating as a community in an efficient way so say sharing products between one another when they need to or carpooling or car sharing so that as a community they model what it is to live sustainably. And Nick, so often our responses at a personal and community level can feel like a drop in the ocean, insignificant. Surely we also need to be campaigning or advocating responses at a national and international level. Can you give us an indicator of what sort of responses we should favour as Christians? The problem about this whole debate is that it gets stuck in a, a rut, the rut which is on the one hand, I can't do anything because government's not going to do anything, what difference am I going to make? And then the government response which is, well, we can't do anything because there's no effectively space of public permission. We can't impose solutions on an unwilling public. The response, therefore, has to be twofold. You have to do things as an individual, but in doing things as an individual and as a community, you create that space of public permission in which government can act. And it's not just your personal response, but how you campaign, the kind of gentle but persistent pressure you put on governments to, for example, develop the renewables industry or whatever it is, you know, to stop airport expansion or road building. That's the kind of thing that gently makes government action more feasible. So it's a two-pronged attack. It is personal, but it's also national. Nick, can you give us some more examples of national and international policies that we should be supporting? Well, of course, there are a very wide range of them, and many of them are extremely complex. But one of the most popular ones at the moment, and I think growing in its popularity, is the idea of carbon trading. Now, that exists in, across the European Union for businesses, but there are also ideas that it could exist amongst individuals. Individuals have a carbon bank account, if, they, if you like, and they're allocated carbon, which they then use up as they travel or heat their homes, but they can also sell it and trade it on the market. It's a, it's a, a fascinating idea, and the thing I think is most fascinating about it is that it actually reflects the legislation of the Jubilee that you find in Leviticus, whereby everybody was allocated their own share of the natural environment, which they could then use or trade as they wanted to. So Nick, can you give us a couple of examples of international level responses we should be supporting? Well, what I said about the two-pronged attack between the personal and, and the national also applies with regard to the national and the international. Great Britain is responsible for something like 2.5% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions. Great Britain alone isn't going to do anything. But if nations like Great Britain refuse to do anything, there's not unlikely to be any international response. So it has to start somewhere. And as part of that, it means putting pressure on the international community so that an example of one nation responding positively can be spread out across all nations. Nick Spencer, thank you very much.